Before Oregon National Laboratory was named, it was started to create the world's first self-sustaining nuclear reaction. They constructed Chicago Pile 1, which achieved criticality, a sustained nuclear fission reaction, under the University of Chicago's football field stands. <laughs> but since this experiment was too dangerous to conduct in a major city, it was moved to nearby Palos Hills and named Argonne after the surrounding forests. You know? When I was trying to learn about the element argon, I was really hoping that Argon Lab, so close to where I grew up, would have something to do with the element argon and not a nearby forest preserve. <laughs> And now, the element argon got its name from the Greek word meaning lazy, uh, but that's because argon atomically is stable and resistant to bonding with other elements. Argon is used to displace oxygen and packaging materials to extend the shelf life of their contents. And since argon is colorless, odorless, and this is the important one, it does not satisfy the body's need for oxygen, argon is an asphyxiant, so it's highly dangerous in closed areas. But on the plus side, liquefied argon is used in cryoablation to actually destroy cancer cells in electrosurgery. And argon can be used to make lights look like blue. And if you had a little mercury, you can make it look more like an electric neon blue. I wonder if argon's blue light looks anything like the night sky. Because the cool thing about argon is that liquid argon is used to target as a target for dark matter searches. The, the interaction of a hypothetical WIMP, a weakly interacting massive particle, is, with the ar argon nucle nucleus, let me say that again, with the argon nucleus, produces a scintillation light. Yeah, all the signs just get to me. You know, okay, okay. When I was playing cards once, we decided to place bets um, with the winner of each hand would get. And since we didn't have any money and we were on an astronomy kick, we decided that the first winner, the winner first hand would win the moon, and then the earth, and then more the planets, and the asteroid belt, the Kuiper belt, the Oort cloud, the solar system, and the Milky Way galaxy. Then my opponent suggested that the winner of the next hand would have dominion over dark matter. All right, they won that hand. But the winner of the next hand and the final hand won the universe. And since I won that hand, I wanted to say that I got to rule over dark matter as well. I don't know. <laughs> now, you can't see dark matter directly. Scientists believe that this hypothetical dark matter, which neither emits nor absorbs light or radiation, can take up to 84% of all of the matter in the universe. Since dark matter can't be seen, scientists can only infer the existence of dark matter by its gravitational effects on other matter in the universe. And they assume that the corresponding particle in cold dark matter is a weakly interacting massive particle. A wimp. And if argon is used to help detect these hypothetical wimps, that's kind of cool. <laughs> because this stable noble gas might be difficult for people trying to breathe in confined spaces when argon can easily displace oxygen, but argon can also help remove cancer from our bodies. It can light the way, and it might even help us learn more about what, well, those undiscovered things in the universe, too.